Hello guys and welcome back to another video. Today we are going to be exploring how well Linux works for video editing, or at least basic video editing, which is what I generally do the most. Um, I want to start off by saying that I'm by no means an advanced Linux user, um, hence why I'm actually doing this. I want to see how, how well it works for somebody who is a beginner at video editing and also a, a novice computer user in general to pick it up and be able to produce content. Um, the operating system I chose is a um, Linux distribution called Elementary OS. This is the latest stable uh, version of it as of today, um, November, uh, November 6, 2016. Um, it's a very pretty operating system overall. I'm going to be doing a video on this later on, so that is not the focus on uh, of today's video. Uh, however, it is a very easy to set up and compatible operating system with most hardware. We'll just leave it there. Um, but let's go ahead and delve into some of the applications that I have tried out for video editing. Um, I'll tell you right off the bat, my favorite that I've used so far is called uh, PTV. I believe that's how you're supposed to uh, pronounce that. And um, the other one that I've used in the past is OpenShot Video Editor, as you can see here. I am also using the Record My Desktop program to be able to record the uh, desktop, which you see here. Uh, it does a pretty darn good job of that. And I will note that all of the applications can be easily obtained through the App Center. Um, if you go into the um, video section on here, everything is in this uh, category right there's Open Shot and um, there's PTV. If you search Record My Desktop, that'll show up in here as well. It's as simple as clicking Install and they, that will get you going. So for the installation process is extremely, extremely easy. Now let's go ahead and open up PTV since it is the slightly better option, I believe, uh, versus OpenShot. I don't mind OpenShot. It's just a little bit basic for what I want to be doing. Uh, PTV reminds me a lot of Adobe Premiere, which I am very familiar with, so I feel right at home using this program. So let's go ahead and open that up. Now you'll see here we are greeted by a very similar sort of window here that's asking us to create a new project. So we go ahead and click New. We select our preset, so uh, everything I record is in 1080p, 30 frames per second. I usually bump it down to 24 frames per second before I upload it, just to save on space a little bit. So I'm going to select uh, 1080p 24, and if we wanted to, we can uh, go over here and adjust the frame rate. So if you wanted to bump it up to, say, 30 frames per second or 60 frames per second, you could do so. I'm just going to leave it at 23.967 or 976 frames per second as its default, and we will click OK. That go that um, opens up a new project, and if we want to import some video files, it's as simple as going up here and clicking the Import button. And we can also just drag and drop files into there, um, but I'm going to go to my video folder, go to my test footage, and we are going to upload those three files there and that is pretty darn simple. So as you can see this is actually significantly simpler I would say than something like Adobe Premiere. It's a much more basic layout. Over here to the right hand side of the screen we've got all of our um, modifier tools. We've got snipping so you can take and trim clips down. Um, you can delete a selected clip, group clips together, ungroup clips, copy, paste, and toggle gapless mode so it kind of uh, moves things together to fill up any gaps between your videos. So let's go ahead and drag one of them down here onto the timeline. This is a timeline based video editor. So you can see there we have our video clip inserted and you can kind of uh, scrub through the video. It's a little bit sluggish on this machine um, partially because I'm recording the video uh, I'm capturing video here and also partially because uh, this machine is a rather old piece of junk. It's um, a little mini ITX box with a quad-core AMD Athlon processor in it. Oop, don't really want to uh, play the audio there, but let's go ahead and 
bring that down. I don't know if you guys will be able to hear that or not in the video, but you can go ahead and click play on that, and it'll scrub through the or it'll play through the video as a um, uh, sample of what it's going to look like. It is a little bit sluggish to play back on this machine, so bear that in mind. If you've got a machine like this, it's a little bit lower powered. It may be a little bit slow. But there, I've gone ahead and added the other two clips in here, and we can go ahead and play through that as well. You can see it is playing up here in the corner. The frame rate is a little bit low again, but that's to be expected with a machine of this power. I tried putting this operating system on a much more powerful system, but I had some issues with getting the onboard USB and Ethernet to work. I've only ever had issues with that particular machine with Linux, so I think it's just that motherboard is particularly uh, well problematic when it comes to installing any Linux distribution. So I won't hold that against this particular um, install process. And um, elementary OS has by far been the easiest operating system, or the easiest Linux distribution to get going. Okay, let's say we want to add a transition between some of our video clips. I'm going to rearrange these here so we have some a little bit more of a noticeable difference between the actual clips themselves. And we won't bother with this one right now, so we'll go ahead and click delete on that. Let's go ahead and zoom in so we can see what we're doing a little bit better. That should be plenty. Now we take our clips and drag them so they overlap. That will give us the ability to add our transition. We click the little space between the two videos and it immediately brings up our transition panel here. Now, um, most of the stuff I would do would be just like fade. Uh, so we can go ahead and toggle fade and that will allow it to fade between the two clips. So we can back up to here, press our play button, and it'll kill our volume again. Press that. And it seems to be a little bit uh, on the laggy side, so let's go ahead and adjust that out just a little bit longer. You notice as you're scrubbing through it, it shows the transition. This is really an issue with this machine here being a little on the slow side. I think it's still kind of rendering the transition in the background. But uh, yeah, it just kind of skips over it um, during playback. So that's a bit of an issue I've noticed with this. Um, however, if we go ahead and export this, um, the transition should uh, show up perfectly fine. So you just have to account for that when you're editing stuff. Now most of the time when I'm editing videos, I don't put transitions in between stuff. I think they look cheesy. Um, so that's, that's kind of a personal preference. Okay, now uh, say you have a clip that you want to divide up into multiple segments. Um, all you have to do with that is you move your little uh, the little red indicator or cursor to wherever you want to divide the clip at and then you press the little scissors uh, button over here on the side which is the uh, split clip at playhead position so you click that and it divides the clip up into uh, two segments then pretty simple alright uh, that's a good basic uh, introduction for uh, simple video editing in general. Um, a lot of the stuff you're going to be doing is just getting a bunch of clips, putting them together, trimming out parts that you don't want, and kind of smashing them into one timeline. This does support overlapping multiple clips onto multiple different timelines. We're not going to get into that right now. Um, but right now we'll go ahead and click render up here. This is going to save out our video as something that we can play back or upload to YouTube. And we can select a preset here. Um, I'm going to just go ahead and use the defaults. Um, so we're going to name it and select our folder. So I'm going to put it in the videos folder. And we're going to call it example.ogv. And let's go ahead and change our... Um, and we'll just go ahead and leave everything as the default for now. I could bump down the settings a little bit, but... Um, this does take quite a bit of processing power and quite a bit of storage space to render the videos. Um, so bear that in mind. You do have to have a fairly decent computer to be doing this. Uh, let's go ahead and click render. 
and it's going to go very quickly on this machine since the uh, it's not a terrible computer and also this is a very small uh, video clip that I was working with actually a section of video clips here um, it's only a couple minutes uh, long actually it looks like it's only 14 14 seconds of video overall so yeah but you notice it is taking a lot longer than 14 seconds to actually render the video clip so this takes I had a half an hour video that I rendered once and it took over two hours to actually complete its rendering process on this computer so it's definitely a little bit on the sluggish side when it comes to that that's also nothing to fault for the uh, program itself that is more the fault of the crappy processor in the machine it's um, just a very low powered quad core AMD Athlon chip uh, from like 2010 so it's almost six years old now but it's still capable of doing things like this um, so if you're in, in an instance where you can just leave the video go and let it render overnight or something or let it render while you're doing something else then it should be fine and we can play it when it's complete I'm just gonna go ahead and close that and close that as well and close our video editor I'm not gonna bother saving this since it's just a test but we can go into our files go to videos and we can see example.ogv is saved right here we can go ahead and play that and see what it looks like here you notice the transition there faded through perfectly fine and it is playing just as well as I would have expected. The video is a little grainy, but that's to do with my camera itself and not the video editor. All right, guys, let me know what you think down in the comments below. And if you thought this was helpful, give it a big old thumbs up. And until next time, take it easy, guys.